moment of silence to honor the life of former state representative Ashley Henley in South Haven Citizen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you today for being here in our midst, Lord. Lord, once again, we come to you and ask for your wisdom and knowledge, Lord, to be imparted to us, Lord, just so that we can make decisions that are good for the city. Lord, I also want to pray for the family of Ashley Henley, Lord Jesus, that you would send your Holy Spirit down to comfort the family in this tough time. And Lord, I pray that the answers will be found uh, and that you'll, you will be uh, amplified, Lord Jesus. Everything that we say and think and do. In your name we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first on the agenda this evening is the approval of minutes for the June 1 meeting. Mayor, we approve the minutes of the regular meeting of June 1st, 2021, with the additional reason for correction. Second, we have a motion by Alderman Payne, second by Alderman Brooks. Is there any discussion? Here you go, the roll call. Yes. 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 That motion carries. I did forget, I just want to remind uh, board members, if you will. Um, IT has asked us to please turn your mic on when you speak. Uh, for the uh, video, it's hard for any audio. If you don't have that on, it's hard for anyone to hear. So if y'all will, please, when you speak, turn your mic on. Okay, next on the agenda is a resolution for a free for a warehouse tax exemption for Helena Troy. Sorry, we adopt the resolution there more involved in the city of South Haven. Warehouse at the one tax exemption to Helen Troy LP is authorized by section 27 31 51 Pacific Code 1972. Second. We have a motion of Alderman Brooks, a second of Alderman Payne. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Alderman Brooks? Yes. Alderman Payne? Yes. Alderman Brooks? Yes. 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 And that motion carries. Next on the agenda is authorization to apply for the federal raised grant fund. Funds, excuse me. Mr. Nick Manley. If this is just authorization, uh, as the mayor noted, to apply for the funds, uh, EDMAC Mac money will need this. The uh, Department of Transportation has allocated around $1 million um, for the, the uh, Rebuilding American Infrastructure and Sustainability Equity Grants, and the word, or the acronym RAISED. Uh, so tonight, authorization for EDA to apply for these funds, they can be used for infrastructure project, projects within the city and must be applied for by July 12th. So, we have a motion of Alderman Gallagher, a second of Alderman Wheeler. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Yes. 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 That motion carries. Next on the agenda is a memorandum of understanding agreement between the City of South Haven and the Pasoa County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Um, I'll, I'll, I can do that. I'll handle that. Uh, basically what this is is for concert promotion. Uh, the City of South Haven had a, con uh, had a contract with uh, Live Nation. It was a three-year deal that expired on December 31st of 2020. Uh, everyone knows with COVID-19 that that, you know, killed off concerts in 2020. Uh, a lot of these companies, like Live Nation, had to do much restructuring because of the financial impact of COVID-19. Um, so that left us in a very strange situation. Right in the middle of COVID-19, our contract expired. And at that time, not knowing who's going to be able to produce concerts, what that's going to look like. So since um, the beginning of this year, we've been in negotiations trying to uh, find out how we want to go. Do we want to do an RFP and, and see what's out there again uh, with the private companies that can produce concerts? There are many out there. Um, everybody's making a comeback now, you know, with the 
uh, success of the vaccinations. Obviously, everyone is feeling more comfortable, you know, having gatherings again. So I guess the good news, not a guess, it is good news that the concerts are coming back. And they're going to come back strong. The bad news is it put us in a tough situation, the timing of everything with our contract with Live Nation expiring, not knowing who would be producing the concerts in the future. So that led us to an interesting discussion uh, without, to make a real long story short, in the past, the city has had agreements with these private companies. We've never had anyone that actually represented uh, the city um, in our dealings with promoting the concerts, the financial end of the concerts. And so we've, we've started floating the idea of, of actually hiring someone who's on our team and uh, you know, who represents us and helps us get the best financial deal uh, for our taxpayers, but then also helps us bring bigger and better acts to our facility. So that's what birthed the idea of coming to an agreement with the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Uh, Todd Mastry is the um, executive director, promoter of events at the Lander Center. Uh, after a lot of thought, we felt like it uh, could be a good idea to have some synergy created, uh, to have uh, access to more of the artist routes, and to bring uh, better acts to the amphitheater. So uh, we discussed this heavily, like, you know, finding out what we can do contractually by state law. Uh, Nick Manley's uh, guiding us through that. So I believe we have a sound agreement now uh, with, uh, with an MOU with the, uh, the Southern County Convention and Business Bureau uh, to where Todd Master will also use his services uh, to book events at our amphitheater. And so this contract is one that uh, will last through the, the rest of 2021 and through the full concert season of 2022. So it's my recommendation to this board that we accept and enter this agreement. So moved. Thank you. We have a motion by Alderman Brooks, second by Alderman Kelly. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Yes. 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 That motion carries. Next on the agenda is authorization for our fire, uh, fire truck proposal. This is uh, authorization for Chief Scadigan to sign the fire truck proposal. Um, this will be the, for the fire pumper, is the actual term. Um, for fire station number five, it, it, uh, the, it was purchased through, we purchased on the state contract. Um, and the reason we're wanting to do it tonight is if it's done by June 30th or July 1, there is a 1% a, a discount on the um, purchase. Uh, the total purchase will be an amount of $847,439. Uh, it's estimated the truck will be ready about 13 months. Um, and um, at that time, that's when the payment will be due. So uh, I know E.D. and the mayor will be uh, working through the best option for payment for the city. There's a couple different options we'll have to make that. And, um, that, should, that won't be an issue, but uh, we won't even make that decision until the fall, early winter, um, because uh, it was, like I said, the payment won't be due until the uh, actual uh, plumber is ready. So tonight, authorization for um, Chief Scotty to sign the um, fire plumber proposal as presented uh, in the amount of $847,439 um, for uh, the purchase of the fire truck. We, we initially had a motion from Alderman Coots, and I'll take Alderman Gallagher as a second. Um, is there any discussion? That's less than that's less than one percent. Well, the the one percent came off the uh, actual purchase of the truck. The truck is seven thousand seven hundred and twelve dollars, seven hundred twelve thousand four hundred and some odd dollars, and then you had the equipment added to it. So the one percent comes off the discount for the truck, not the total purchase. I'm sorry, I should have specified. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Yes. 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 That motion carries. Next on the agenda is a contract with Neil Schaefer for stormwater management. And this is a contract required by our phase two permit um, for stormwater. Uh, and the contracts with Neil Schaefer, um, it's a kind of every entity um, in the Southern County, including the Southern County, enters into a contract for this as part of our permit renewal. Um, 
mill sis with the um, uh, stormwater major plan and our general permit renewal as well in the implementation of the five-year uh, stormwater plan which is also kind of a separate part of the phase two program uh, dan cordell had to deal with mill shaper uh, made some changes to it and they agreed to those changes uh, the total amount uh, $17,388 per year, and that's based on the each city's or each entity's size. Um, and there is a one time payment of about $6,588 uh, for the um, initial uh, payment uh, permit process. So, tonight, authorization for the mayor to sign this contract as presented um, and with no shaper, and they are our current contractor for this service as well. And Dan's here also, if you have any questions specifically from him as well. Motion to be set and check the full Second. We have a motion by Alderman Brooks, a second by Alderman Wheeler. Is there any discussion? Second. Hearing none, roll call. Yes. Next on the agenda is authorization to bid construction of the Star Landing Road water treatment plant by uh, Mr. Dane Cordell. Board Mayor, this is um, the plant we've talked about for uh, several years that's located actually just across the road from the new fire station underneath the elevated storage tank. And we've been blessed with a lot of development in the past. This is basically allowing us to expand our water system capacity capabilities uh, to help meet our future growth, growth we've experienced. It's, uh, we have several funding options that the mayor and, and he and myself and Ray have to go through, uh, but in order to kind of streamline things, we would like to go get authorization to at least advertise because it is about a 10 month to 11 month construction process that so we can we'll have about two or three months up here at the front for advertising before it comes back to full forward for a little bit. Second. Second. We have a motion of Alderman Flores, second of Alderman Wheeler. Is there any discussion? It is important to note, uh, Dan updated you this morning just as a reminder. I know that we talked about it. Uh, I know specifically in some committee meetings about three or four years ago, uh, not so much lately, but uh, it has to do with our growth, obviously, and we want to stay ahead of the game. So uh, we're not at any kind of dangerous capacity level right now, but uh, but we we got to move uh, because with our the rapid rate of growth that we have, we got to stay on top of it. Because I appreciate the Ray Humphrey for keeping us there. So I think uh, I think we're in good shape. We do need to move on. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Yes. 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 And a motion carries. Uh, next on the agenda is a resolution to claim private property. Mr. Mayor, I think we have a resolution to claim private property. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Brooks, second by Alderman Payne. Is there any discussion among the board? Hearing none, is there anyone in the audience that has a financial interest in any of the properties on the list that would like to speak? Hearing or seeing none, roll call please. Yes. 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 That motion carries. Next on the agenda is our planning agenda. Ms. Whitney Cook. Yes, sir. We just have one item on the agenda. Um, it is a request to rezone from an R10 development to a PPD. Going to be on the east side of Sweeney Road, north of Brinkley Drive. It's a little infill development of approximately five acres. Uh, the developer actually came in and proposed three different scenarios uh, to the planning commission. Um, the first one was just a single code. R10 lots uh, compliant with the zoning they have now. Uh, the secondary option was for, uh, again, a single uh, cove with 20% open space, uh, smaller lots than 10,000, but it did comply with PUD. 
The third option is the one that was proposed and approved by the Planning Commission, and it was a condominium style design. Uh, there are some elevations actually submitted in the package um, that had a 1600 square foot minimum fenced in yards. Uh, they were done in four plexes. Uh, they were privately owned. There were some stipulations placed on the development for the covenants that uh, it didn't turn into a, essentially an apartment complex. It was privately owned condos. Uh, they didn't concede to that. There were some changes uh, in terms of. Can we get to the elevations? This is the one that they opted for. Um, if we can scroll down, there's some elevations in it. Uh, anyways, the Planning Commission opted for the condominium, uh, privately owned condominium design. Uh, again, it does comply with all the PUD requirements set forth. Uh, it does comply with the comprehensive plan, uh, and it is seen as an infill development. So it was recommended for approval as that and passed unanimously with the planning commission. Uh, that's not it, but I, I guess we'll you know, get to it. <laughs> so I have it with me if you'd like to see it. We have a motion by Alderman Wheeler, second by Alderman Poots. Is there any discussion? Whitney, uh, this is, I guess, the type of community. Is there, or will there be like a homeowners association involved with it? There will. That's the actual design scene right there. Um, uh, there is an association to maintain all of the green space. Uh, the landscaping uh, It is uh, proposed to be uh, uh, public roads, so they won't have that maintenance. Uh, there's a barrier fence along the back side of Broad Iron, so it backs up the Central Park so they can have the park access there. Um, covenant restrictions are pretty tight. We got those yesterday. I do have a copy of those that I can send you as well. Um, but it has the dues put in there. It has where the maintenance involved. Um, like I said, they are privately owned homes with a privately owned backyard fenced in. That's the only area of green space that is um, just the responsibility of the homeowner. Anything in the HOA from coming from? Yes, we did ask them to place something in there. Uh, there was a lot of discussion behind the scenes with that. They didn't concede to that, and I do. I, like I said, I just got it from his attorney, and it is worded uh, as such. Any other discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Yes. 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 Not much in carries. Thank you. Next on our agenda is our mayor's report. I'm going to update a few things uh, real quickly for you. Again, uh, just like you heard me say at our last meeting, the city of South Haven still continues to enjoy uh, extremely high sales tax revenue. Uh, our economy is great in the city. Um, our updates, again, just for one month on sales tax uh, is over 300000 higher in budget in one month. Uh, tourism tax revenue is uh, is actually see, a little over 100,000 in one month, more than budgeted. So we've had a, a positive trend. So we're easily on pace uh, to break our own record in 2019 of the highest sales tax revenue in the history of South Haven. We will break that record this year again. So it's projected at this point, uh, just on the current pace, uh, to be well over 16 million. Uh, the highest we've ever been in the past is 15 point one. So that's good news. Um, moving on, uh, just an update from an administrative standpoint. Uh, obviously, we're uh, start. All of us are start about to start a new term, uh, with the exception of. Um, but we have already started uh, having uh, goal meetings, goal and objective meetings with all department heads. Uh, as I told them this morning, we have a great team uh, in our departments. They do a, a, an outstanding job. Uh, but there's things that we can all get better on. So we're committed uh, as a team to uh, improving our operation, uh, making it an even better uh, city for our citizens. So our department heads are working on uh, their goals, uh, their objectives, uh, and ways that they can improve uh, the weaknesses in their department. So we'll continue to get better. We'll have those meetings. I'll give you future updates about that. Uh, because of the timing, you know, an election year, uh, and the time that we have to set our budget, uh, y'all know that it's time you know, for us to start getting that ready. There's a lot of work involved in a short amount of time. So what we're going to do this year is combine these, uh, I call them go meetings, our goals and objective meetings. We're going to combine the uh, go meetings with our budget meetings for each department. 
and that way um, we'll meet with each department head, go ahead and start going through line by line in their budget request. Uh, then at that point, he and I, he's going to set in on the meetings. We'll, we'll craft up um, uh, a base budget, and that way we'll bring it to, to in front of the full board. But that's worked well in the past, just for us to have these meetings, you know, incorporate all that into the budget, and then bring it before you. And that way we start, you know, looking at what we can do, and what we can't do. So that's the update tonight, just to let you know that that is already in process. Um, at the last meeting, we talked about the American Rescue Act funds. Uh, the money that the federal government is going to be providing, you know, for the COVID-19 relief. Um, there have been a lot of moving parts to this, um, as anything with the federal government, uh, but we're hoping to get some final answers soon on how much money is going to be available to the city of South Haven. Uh, as I told you last time, Edie and I will sit down and look at how the money can be spent, and we'll put up, set up a rough draft on some priorities, and again, we'll bring that before you. Obviously, you make the final decision on that. Uh, but we'll be doing the uh, initial legwork on that to present that to you very soon. Uh, a couple of city updates on events. Um, we didn't back down from fireworks last year, and we're going to have them again. We never, we never backed out. We were the only city in Minnesota County that went through uh, with the fireworks show last year. It made perfect sense. Fireworks are way in the air. You can social distance and see them from a long way away. So it made no sense to cancel the fireworks show. Uh, we made a few adjustments with uh, separating vendors and keeping people separated that did want to come to the amphitheater. Uh, but we did have the show last year. It's all set to go again. And we have no reason not to believe it's going to be the best fireworks show ever in the city's history on July 4th. Um, Dizzy Dean World Series starts the next day on July 5th. I don't have to tell you all about what a big deal that is uh, to our businesses with all the teams coming in from out of town. A lot of the businesses have told me that they uh, they count on that in, in their budget. They count on the Dizzy Dean World Series. And so the good news is there's no hangups with that. We're going to have the Dizzy Dean World Series this year again. So that's great news. Uh, just coming my list, I think I've hit everything here. Uh, the other thing that uh, this, the most special thing tonight is I asked Alderman Brooks, uh, since this is his last uh, board meeting, uh, he did not run again for another term as Alderman at large. Uh, he served uh, three terms as an alderman for our city. Uh, and I just asked him to kind of take uh, the last part of my mayor's report tonight and just give some advice to the city. We just want to tap into his brain uh, one last time. And uh, I want him to you know, just kind of talk to us about you know, what he's seen over the last 12 years of our city, uh, what he sees are some of our biggest challenges moving forward, and, uh, and what he sees uh, that we need to do you know, to, be, to continue with our success. And I know we have um, a lot of Alderman Brooks family. Welcome y'all here tonight. So glad that y'all are with us. Um, yeah, thank you. And I'm not going to dominate the conversation other than I, I just want to say that um, I never knew William. You know, I'm, I'm quite a bit older than William. Um, but I, I know he's a special guy. You know, I read about his military service. But I never got the chance to really know him until 2013 and um he's a special guy man he's uh not only is he a, a hero he served our country but uh he's he's been somebody that that we can count on you know with the city he's been a guy that um understands his role you know he's been a, a big asset to me because he's uh, let me do my job he didn't step on me uh but he's always there when i need him and he, he's a smart guy. He's a very wise guy for, uh, in general, but especially for his age. And um, has made tremendous decisions for the city and advocated for tremendous decisions for the city. And uh, we're going to miss you, but I, I want you, before I turn the mic over to you, is I just want you to know that I appreciate your service to our country, and I appreciate your service to our city. Thank you. Self-serving. It is and will always be a team effort. So I love sports, and health day. 
and it's the best way to lay some air. Um, we always we place the name on the front of the jersey, not the names on the back. And our team is the city of South Haven. While we as elected officials often get credit and praise for how well and efficiently the city operates, the truth is the folks who keep the city going day in and day out are our city employees. They're the unsung heroes that can never be praised enough for the incredible job they do. I'd like to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your dedication and duty to our city. You've made my job so much easier. Next, I'd like to individually thank each of my colleagues. Raymond, I want to thank you for your leadership and guidance for the last eight years. I've relied heavily on your business sense and financial acumen. You're a man of God, you're a man of God, character and integrity are some of the words that come to mind when I thank you. You taught me more than you'll ever know, but I'm honored to call you my friend. John David, we've served this board for four years, but have been close friends for many years prior. You're one of the absolute most giving, compassionate, big hearted men I've ever known. You continually give your time, effort, and money to help others, yet never see. Joel, you're a man of un unwavering faith. Many don't know the hardships your family has dealt with last year with your wife Tracy's cancer battle. I can't put into words the admiration and respect I have for her using her life altering situation to help others. As for you, my friend, you've shown her family responsibilities and civic leadership, and you're an inspiration to me. And once I want to thank you as well for your friendship. Christian, you and I have formed quite the friendship over the last eight years. When we first met, I wasn't sure where to find some common ground. I like sports, you're a band guy. I like to travel the world, you like that new world. <laughs> but in all seriousness, as I got to know you, I quickly learned your man's conviction, compassion, and unwavering character. You listen quietly and attentively, and when it's time to speak up, you always have something of substance and importance to say. You're wise beyond your years, and I value your friendship. Charlie, we've served the least amount of time together, but during the last three years, I've seen your unwavering dedication to War II. And I admire and respect that. It's not always easy representing the original side of town. There, there are challenges and obstacles. There will always be many challenges to go with it. But please continue to continue to work hard, be a voice for your award, and always put service before self. Thank you as well for my friend. Darren, your leadership, character, and unwavering integrity was exactly what the city needed when you were elected eight years ago. After our first meeting in your, in your insurance office, I called George and he asked me how it went. Without hesitation, I told him that we were going to be all right. Your direct, straightforward manner was a refreshing change to the usual political status quo. I had a sense of peace, knew you were the man for the job. After having the privilege of service after the last eight years, that initial question has been validated. You might be a rebel pitching legend, but you're a bulldog for the city. <laughs> Thank you for your guidance, and I will always value our appreciate George, I have said the best for last, my friend. What a journey we've been through. To say our first term was difficult or troublesome, be an understatement. Simply put, I could not have survived without you on the side. Our friendship goes way beyond the walls of this building. We quickly bonded over a mutual love of old school Memphis wrestling. And even if you're a rebel, you're on waivers for our universities. You've become one of my best friends, best and closest friends in the entire world. I admire your dedication to your family, friends, and this community. The city is simply a better place because of you. Finally, I'd like to recognize my family. Their unconditional love and support has always been my driving factor, especially my mom and dad. I wouldn't be who I am today without my parents. I was blessed to be raised in a, in a loving Christian two-parent household. There was never a time growing up that one or both of them were not in attendance at whatever event or activity that my brother and I were part of. Those are things you can never put a price on. My big brother John has always been my biggest supporter and defender, whether it's beating up bullies as a kid or building frames for my campaign signs and knocking on doors when I was running for office. He's always been there. I'd like to close by saying thank you to citizens of South Haven for the trust and responsibility you've given me over the last 12 years. God bless you.
Mike, one item that came up, uh, just authorization for the uh, city to expend funds in accordance with Mississippi Code 1731 for the uh, swearing in ceremony uh, for the mayor and board um, based on the uh, uh, listing of uh, good availability of the city. Sorry, I like the question. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Payne, second by Alderman Brooks. Is there any discussion? Carry down a roll call. Yes. 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 That motion carries. Next on the agenda is our utility bill adjustment docket. Mr. Mayor, would we approve the utility bill of each adjustment docket as presented on the state? We have a motion to honor pain, second to honor hoops. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Yes. 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 That motion carries. Next on the agenda are three claims dockets. Is there a motion to approve docket one? Mr. Mayor, move we approve claims docket number one in the amount of two million one hundred and thirty thousand one hundred and eighty-two dollars and ninety-five cents. On well, docket one, we have a motion of Alderman Payne, second of Alderman Hoots. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Yes. 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 That motion carries. Okay, is there a motion to approve docket two? Mr. Mayor, we will approve docket number two in the amount of $89.90. Second. We have a motion to with Payne, second to with Brooks. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Yes. 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 That motion carries. Okay, is there a motion to approve docket three? Mr. Mayor, we will approve docket number three in the amount of $15,933.16. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Payne, second by Alderman Brooks. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Yes. 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 That motion carries. Okay, next on the agenda is uh, the purpose of determining the need for executive session. Make that motion. Thank you. Got a motion by Alderman Gallagher, second by Alderman Kelly. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. I just have a motion carries. The need this evening is claims and litigation against the South Haven Police Department, citywide personnel and economic development within the city. Is there a motion to declare executive session? Second. We got a motion by Alderman Hoots, second by Alderman Wheeler. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. Ayes have it, motion carries. The mayor and board will now enter executive session. Are we? Yeah. 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 Yeah.